Several accounts have been written about the only intact German King Tiger tank No. 332 captured during World War II. The tank belonged to the Heavy SS Tank Battalion 501. In every account, mistakes and untruths have been made. In an effort to set the record straight, I present the true story of Tiger 332. During the Battle of the Bulge, which took place in the Ardennes Forest of Belgium and Luxembourg from 16th of December, 1944 to January 25, 1945, the 740th Tank Battalion of the 1st U.S. Army as a separate battalion was available to 1st Army for assignment to any infantry division requiring tank support. At the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, the 740th Tank Battalion was hurriedly assigned to the 30th Infantry Division for five days then transferred to the 82nd Airborne Division which had been given a position to hold on the north shoulder of the Bulge. The town of Bastogne which most unknowing people think was the entire Battle of the Bulge was in fact only a part of the battle. The real story of the German Tiger tank No. 332 started on a very cold night during the Battle of the Bulge when Sergeant Glenn D. George and his Sherman tank crew were patrolling down a fire break lane in the forest as snow fell during this coldest winter on record in Belgium. Suddenly he came upon a German King Tiger bearing the numbers 332 on its turret. Usually, coming face to face with a Tiger tank was the last thing a person ever saw, but in this case Glenn George thought the crew must be sleeping due to their inaction. He then instructed his gunner to fire a star shell above the Tiger to discover why the Germans had not acted upon seeing George's tank. When the star shell burst above the Tiger, the German crew immediately bailed out of the Tiger and ran for the cover of the forest. George then knew the Germans had been sleeping and the star shell bursting above the Tiger probably made the Germans in the tank think they were on fire and abandoned the Tiger. George had fired on the crew as it bailed out of the tank with the machine gun on his tank's turret killing three of the German crew and wounding one. He believed the fifth German crew member ran away and scathed. After this, George inspected the Tiger and decided it was intact and was usable. He then called battalion commander, George K. Rubel, informing him that he had captured a Tiger and was going to drive it to Berlin. When Glenn George reported what he had captured, Colonel Rubel told him to get out of that tank and continue his patrol before some GI sees him and knocks him out. No way. I'm staying with this thing as long as I can. Maybe I'll get in close with another Tiger and knock it out. With that, Colonel Rubel told George that he wanted to send the intact Tiger to the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland for evaluation. Nevertheless, George continued on in 332 but did not find another German tank to knock out until finally 332 ran out of fuel and had to be abandoned near the small town in Belgium. George informed Colonel Rubel the location of 332 and continued on his way in his own Sherman tank. The next morning, Colonel Rubel informed 1st Army Headquarters that a German Tiger tank had been captured and was on the road in Belgium should they want to send it back to Aberdeen for study. Since no other Tiger had ever been captured intact, 1st Army directed the 463 Ordnance Evacuation Company to pick up the Tiger and take it to Spa, Belgium Railway Station for shipment to the port of Antwerp, Belgium and further shipment to the US. The 463rd Ordnance Evacuation Company arrived with a flatbed trailer usually used for a Sherman tank which was much smaller than the Tiger. The first problem however was the metal tracks of the Tiger were frozen to the ground due to the harsh winter. To be able to move the tank, gasoline was poured on the ground and around the tracks and ignited freeing the tracks from the frozen ground. The Tiger was then able to be winched onto the flatbed trailer however, Due to the width of the Tiger about half of each track extended past the width of the trailer. Of course the exceptional weight of the Tiger flattened the 18 wheels of the trailer and made pulling the trailer very difficult for the prime mover tractor assigned to pull the trailer. After much work, the 463rd Ordnance made it to Belgium and unloaded 332 next to the a railway station where many photos were taken. Most famous of all photos of 332 shows it being inspected by Colonel Rubel and his staff which appears in our battalion history book. Noted especially was that the 463rd Ordnance had painted 463 ORD EVAC on 332's turret giving the impression it had been captured by them. After a few days, 
the 463rd placed 332 on a railway flatbed and took it to Antwerp where it was placed on a ship and sent to the US still with 463 ORD EVAC, painted on the turret 332 arrived in the US and was shipped by rail to Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland where it was examined, tested, and studied. When completed it was placed outside in the open where it remained painted in a gray color for some 40 years. It was then sent to the Patton Museum of Cavalry and Armor at Fort Knox. While at Fort Knox it was cleaned up and the left side was sliced off to reveal the inner workings of the tank. It was painted in proper colors and the number 332 was again painted on its turret. 463 Odievac was no longer visible nor should it be. 332 was placed in the museum for all to see but the story of the capture was portrayed erroneously. The manager of the museum in his infinite wisdom placed a plaque in front of 332 in the museum which stated that 332 had been captured during the Battle of the Bulge by the Ordnance Evacuation Company. Continuing the story of Tiger 332 after it was recovered to the USA, when the Ordnance Center completed testing the tank was transferred to the Ordnance Museum at Aberdeen Proving Ground. P. Art of the purpose of the museum was to provide training and education to soldiers of ordnance capabilities. As part of that program, sections of armor were cut away from the left side of the tank so that the interior could be viewed. The tank was displayed indoors until sometime after 1951, when it was placed outdoors with many other vehicles from the collection. While 332 was repainted a number of times in the 1980s, it was generally in a state of neglect. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.